BSK Speedworks Programmable Engine Management System onto the K-Series BMW. So the system will work with any K-Series BMW from uh, K75, the K100, 8 valves, all the 16 valves, including the 1200. Uh, the process is slightly different between the different models, but today we'll, we'll be doing the 8 valve here. This is a 1987 K100 8 valve. Uh, the main difference on the 8 valve is that we need to fit the uh, 16 valve throttle bodies. So I'll be showing you later uh, modifications that we need to do that. The first thing we'll be doing with this bike is we'll be putting it on the dyno to give us an idea of what power it's making now and what the fuel looks like, and then we can compare that afterwards when we finish with the engine management kit and, and show you what the difference is. Okay, so this is the dyno result for the before test on the K108 valve. Um, that's not a bad curve, but you can see horsepower 67.8 and 52.5 foot-pounds of torque, which is a bit low really. I'd expect it to be about 75, something like that, on a stock K108 valve. And if we look at the fueling, then we see the reason why it's a bit low is probably because it's a bit rich. Ideally, you want a line somewhere here for a road bike, but that's 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 very rich all the way through the, the rev range. You can adjust the fueling on the on the programmable unit when we fit it, so that'd be fine. And we'll we'll try and bring it up here somewhere. I mean, it's, you don't normally get a straight line, but we'll have it somewhere here, hopefully. So the next thing we'll do is we'll remove uh, remove this bodywork, so we can see what we're doing, and then we'll remove all the parts that, to do with the fuel injection system that we're not going to be needing anymore. The bike's got the standard air box on with the air flow meter on. That's all going to come off. This bike's actually going to have pod filters, but you could put the air box back on if you wanted to. Um, there's various options once you've got the, the um, engine management system on uh, for the air intake, big pods or some sort of intake system, which you can't do on the standard bike due to the airflow meter. Anyway, we'll show you stage by stage as we go. Okay, so now we've got the bodywork removed. Um, we can see it's got a motor gadget blue unit on here with a keyless ignition on top of the coil, so we have to reposition that because the coil packs changing and it's got a bet period in there so now we're going to remove all the stuff we don't need from the fuel injection system uh, so that's going to be the hall sensor and the cover all the hall sensor parts um, we're going to keep the only thing we keep is the uh, brass timing disc we'll use that later um, we'll remove the ignition control unit uh, the, the brain We'll disconnect the battery in a minute before we start, of course. And then we're going to remove the coil pack, this cover, the leads. And then we're going to remove the plenum chamber, the air box with the airflow meter inside. Uh, then we're going to remove, because this is the 8 valve, we'll be removing the 8 valve throttle bodies. We're not going to be using those. Um, I think that's about it. And then we'll, then we'll look at the next stage. Okay, so now we've removed all the standard fuel injection parts. I've also removed the fuel rail, um, just because it's easier to move about. Coils have gone, everything's gone. We'll probably put the ECU, the new one, in that slot where the old one was. Uh, ignition control unit's gone. And then get around the front. The whole sensor's moved and you can see the disc there, the timing disc, we'll leave that. 
and the wire routed through from the water temperature sensor. So we've got quite a hole there now. And then these are the parts that are removed. So yeah, quite a lot of stuff really. There's the eight the eight valve throttle bodies that we, we won't use. Um, including the fuel pressure regulator we won't use we'll use a higher uh, 16 valve fuel pressure regulator and the 16 valve TPS and the throttle bodies uh, air box air, air flow meter ignition control unit in the brain and then the FI wire in there coils and the leads so now we're ready to start putting on the hardware and wiring it up Okay, so we need to elongate these holes in the TPS so that we can rotate it further anti-clockwise that way than it goes at the moment. Anyway, these holes need to be made longer. There's a small metal clip that needs to be removed. And then so elongate these holes so we can go further this way so we need to make this one go up and this one down a bit That's a lot more round to the anti-clockwise and we just set that there. Right, we've fitted the throttle bodies now. Um, we've put our 3.5 bar fuel pressure regulator on this one. Um, but you could use the 16 valve 3 bar regulator, that's fine. Uh, the only other thing we've done is we've uh, joined these... Um, pipes together on the back which normally on the original bike are part of the breather system but you can blank them off or join them together they would normally be joined here actually to the plenum chamber with the crank this crankcase breather so we're going to need to reroute this uh, we'll put a PCV valve on here and then we'll put it to a catch can or, or just straight to atmosphere but the good thing is we're not then blowing um, crankcase uh, oil and petrol down the throttle bodies which is, isn't a great idea better for the environment but not better for your bike um, we've got the throttle cable we've fitted on here with the 16 valve um, bracket uh, which is fine because we're going to put pod filters on here if you're going to put a plenum chamber back the original plenum chamber back on you'll probably need to put the 8 valve bracket on the, which comes in from the back to avoid the plenum chamber. Uh, the other thing you need to do is, I don't know if you can see this, but where the, where the arm comes through for the throttle cable, just need to um, cut away a piece of that in, intake uh, mount there so that the, that swings by and doesn't catch on it. Uh, then they also, uh, yeah, I've just, I just fitted a, like a, a button headed Allen bolt on there uh, so, it's, it, so that it clears it and just, just filed a little piece away from the, from the, from the, the mount. And then also make sure that the, um, the Jubilee clips are clear um, for, for the mechanism that comes around underneath here. basically just make sure that the cable is, is, is free. And that's it for the throttle bodies. I'm just gonna go through what you actually get with this kit and 
where it all goes. So this is the loom obviously. So if we start from this end, the first thing is the connection for the coil, which will mount on the bracket. I'll show you that later where that fits on with the screws there. Um, there's the, T, the TPS connector there. There's an earth uh, connector that's going to go onto the head. And then we've got the, in, the injector connectors, the four. They'll obviously run along the fuel rail in the standard uh, position. And then we've got the connector for the water temperature sensor, which is, it comes with one, but you, you can use the one that's in it. It's the same as the standard one. Um, and the other one is the this is the air temperature sensor connector this is the air temperature sensor quite a small quite a small sensor now normally all that needs to do is be in the area where the air is coming in so if it was if you had an air box then you you could put that onto the air box we're using pod filters on this bike, so we'll just put it somewhere near the pod filters. I'll probably um, put some sort of protection, maybe a piece of foam or something around the end of this, because it's quite a fragile um, thing on the end there, so we'll protect that. Uh, then we go down the, obviously this loom's gonna wind along the bike. It's, it's plenty long enough, this loom, to go uh, right to the back of the bike, so you could put the ECU under the seat unit. We've done that before. Um, so as we come up to this end now, um, this is the connection for the USB CAN bus. So you talk to the ECU from a laptop or PC. There's uh, some fuses there. And then this is the connector, which is obviously connects to the ECU there. There's the, there's the CAN bus lead there. RS232 um, with a USB connector. Now the, the main one we're going to be dealing with this end is, is this one. This is the auxiliary socket and then there's the other end of it here that we're going to come to the pins and everything we're going to wire that in to the bike. And what we'll use this for is um, on this bike we'll use it for the, the fuel pump relay so one single wire for the fuel, fuel pump relay, one wire for the cooling fan relay, and we'll use one wire for the um, the rev counter, the taco. Um, it does do more things. I think there's six six wires on there, uh, but that's all we're going to use. The other things are wideband lambda sense you might put in there. Something else which I can't remember off the top of my head, but I don't really use. The other wires are on the end of the very end of the loom is the red and white here and that is red is permanent 12 volt so that's going to always be connected to the battery or to the motor gadget or wherever you've got the permanent 12 volt live and this is the white is switch 12 volt so that's when the ignition's turned on that then that gives power to the ECU so um, Other than that, all these connectors, you know, they connect straight onto existing places mostly other than these ones that are already there. So it's quite simple to, to put the loom on, but I'll, I'll do that as we go along. Obviously there's the, the HT leads um, that go with the, the coil, which we're gonna mount onto the bell housing. Uh, the other bit is uh, the crank pickup. Um, so I'll, I'll do another video in a bit of, of fitting this onto the front of the engine for the bracket and oh, I don't know what we haven't got is the sensor that's the that's the pickup that goes on the bracket there and that's going to connect to the grey wire there and then the brown is the water so they're, they're the two connectors they're actually the same so they, you can get those around the wrong way but brown is water and grey the grey wire is for the crank pickup. 
Anyway, we'll, we'll, I'll show you that as we fit it onto the bike, but that's, that's the kit as it comes. Fitting the coil pack now. The, the coil itself mounts onto this bracket with the four supplied screws there. It's gonna go onto this mounting on the bell housing like that. I've already put the leads on, it's a lot easier to put them on now. Uh, there is an orientation, I'll show you that, which way the, they go. The, the leads are four different lengths, so it's pretty obvious that the cylinder one's the furthest away. Two, three, four. held by this M6 bolt and a nut. Check the right way around. This is cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, and cylinder four. Put that clip on there to hold the wires in place. That's that. Right, we're going to fit the crank mount, trigger wheel and sensor now. The mount itself locates in this hole on that dowel, which is in line with the top dead centre mark. Not top dead centre on the engine, that doesn't matter what position the engine's in. But that, that dowel goes in this hole, which corresponds to this red mark here. only go on one way I think anyway just give it a tap with a soft mallet to ensure it's square and that's held on with these three M4 Allen head bolts to the end of the crank. I'm not going to too mad doing these up because they're, they're only M4. I want to make sure it's seated properly. And then this is the trigger wheel. See on the front face there's a red mark with a punch hole that needs to be in line with this red dot so that's going to go into this hole here now this can go on anyway go that way 
that way or that way. But we want it this way, otherwise nothing will work. Let's go along with a single M6 bolt. That is the ninth tooth after the gap here is top dead centre. Okay, now we'll put the bracket on. Two studs. Now the sensor is going to go onto the bracket. You see there's some spaces there. Normally it's about two spaces between the sensor and the bracket. Because we need to make sure we've got a, uh, a good air gap here. The air gap needs to be less than 0.60 of a millimetre. So just, just a half a millimetre or less really obviously not touching and that's achieved with um, the, the washers between the bracket and the spacer uh, bracket and the sensor should be a gap there which we want to be as I say about half a millimetre so Let's see if the next one up goes in just so yeah it's half it's half a millimetre you could have it down to say point point three be okay but nothing bigger than 0.60 so that's fine um, and put the cover on That's it for the uh, crank pickup and the trigger wheel. And I've fitted the loom on just loosely for now, just to show you where it, where it goes. So we've got the connection there onto the coil, uh, the TPS, and then there's an earth lead there, you can go onto that. There's a point there on the engine that doesn't seem to do much. So we put that earth onto there and then we start with the four injectors going along. 
there's the air temperature sensor connector which will probably just go here somewhere on there's a there's a cover on this bike goes here um, so I'll probably put it behind there somewhere um, and then we've got the loom goes off down here and then it connects let me go around the other side so it comes through that's down to the crank sensor the gray the gray wire and then the brown one is onto the water temperature sensor there I haven't fixed this up yet but I'm gonna I'm just putting it there loosely to start with and then the ECU is in there seems to fit quite nicely you know what I'm neating this all up uh, there's my auxiliary connector um, and fuses and then the two wires for the power come up into the it's all going to come up into the top here I hope that's like loosely fitted on and I'll, I'll fit it up properly now so I've got the ECU in there now and tidied up the wiring onto the fuel rail so what the, I've got a cover to go on here See the plug there going to the pickup at the front of the engine. I've put the air temperature sensor there, sort of out of the way there, down the back. I've put a bit of foam over it to protect it as well. I think that'll be fine there. So we need to now wire in permanent live switch 12 volt on those two wires into up here and the cooling fan fuel pump and the taco onto this auxiliary plug and wire that into here next I'm going to do the final wiring in now so this this bike has uh, a bit of a mishmash of wiring here because we've got the stock uh, K100 wiring and then we've got a motor gadget and we've got the BEP unit as well. Um, if I was fitting this um, system from the, from scratch in a build, I, I wouldn't use any of the stock wiring. I wouldn't I wouldn't use the fuse box. Or any of the stock K100 wiring because you just don't need it the only thing you need would be the, the start of relay um, and then a relay for the fuel pump and a relay for the cooling fan then you could use a, the motor gadget for all the road equipment lights and and the starting and everything like that but as soon as we have the system as it is I'm gonna wire in to the the stock wiring and to the motor gadget. I was going to try and show you the fitting of the wires into here. It's quite tricky and it's difficult to show on the video as well. Let's give it a go. So the brown on, on my wiring here is coming from the fan. That's going to the black and purple wire there. The yellow is from the taco and that's going to the black and white and then the red is from my fuel pump that's going to the black and orange so that would be that one but anyway they should end up looking like that they push through from the back and you can pull, pull them through with some pliers and then you push this yellow part of the connector in. Just to finish off the wiring up this end now. So we've got a relay for the fuel pump. Here actually, relay for the fuel pump. I actually used the same relay as was on the stock bike 
for the fuel injection system. I've put a new relay for the fan, the cooling fan. Uh, and then we've taken the yellow wire that was into this BEP was for the uh, TACO. So I've just took the wire out and we've run it through and that's going to go onto the ECU. So we've got three wires coming through, pump, fan and TACO I'm going through here. And they're joined on now to the auxiliary connector. The other two wires that came from the main harness, uh, the permanent live and the switch live I've just put into the motor gadget unit there. The other thing I remembered, if you are going to wire it into a stock bike, is the starter relay, which you, you'd need to keep anyway. But the two wires here on the start relay, one of them, when you press the starter button, it actually earths through the um, ignition unit, the ignition control unit, which we now don't have, obviously. So I've run a separate earth wire on, onto here, just so the starter will work. So that's it. So it's really just, it's fairly simple, really. It's, it's five wires on that end of the loom and two relays. Now I'm going to connect the laptop up to this and see what happens. The laptop's connected through the CAN bus. I've disconnected the ignition lead. Uh, obviously got no fuel tank on, no, no fuel wires or anything yet. But everything else is batteries connected, everything's connected up. So I'm going to turn the ignition on. Yeah, and I heard the fuel relay click on and off, so that's primed. That would be priming the fuel pump. Uh, it primes for three seconds. You can actually set it in the software, but three seconds is, is enough. And now I'm going to. Click this little green icon up here, and that's going to connect to the ECU. And you're looking for a little when it's connected, there'll be a little tick on online. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go up here and go to uh, scope and general data, and you should get some lines coming across. And some indications here. Uh, so we've got coolant temperature 15, air temperature 15. It is cold in here. It's warming up a bit. And the battery voltage, so 12.5, uh, throttle position zero. If I turn the throttle, we should see that number increase and decrease and get some readings on the graph here. So that, that's the first page to look at, and everything looks okay. The next thing I'm going to do, close that. Go to sensor setup. analog input setup. There's some data here. The one I'm looking at is throttle position percentage and the raw voltage for the TPS. I'm going to turn the throttle and I should see that number increase to 100 or 99 or something would be alright. It wants to sit at naught. And you need to be able to hold whatever throttle opening you desire from 
especially down the bottom. So you, this is why we cut out the TPS so I can hold a small percentage of throttle and it's accurate to what I'm doing on the throttle itself. And that looks absolutely fine. If it wasn't fine, then you might need to cut out the TPS a bit further or you might need to set this where it says set minimum set TPS minimum key off after setting you press that button and then turn the ignition off and back on and that should set the minimum and same you hold the throttle open press set TPS maximum and hopefully that would um, rectify it if you have any issues the, the, the voltage should also be from 0 to about 5 yeah, five volts. So that's that's okay. So everything's fine there. Now I'm going to go to the digital inputs. All right, and now I'm going to press the starter button. Everything's connected except the the ignition wires. So I press it, let's see what happens. Oh, it's turning over, so that's something. That looks okay. It should say it should say sync's okay. I think it's actually saying something else as well. Um, I think it's probably okay. If it isn't, if it's if it's not synced, then it's an issue with the um, the pickup on the front of the engine. But we'll find uh, that's okay. At least that's working. We'll we'll when we try and start it up, then we'll soon know if it works or not. Uh, other things you can look at here. Um, Okay, auxiliary functions. On here we can see uh, the settings here. There's a lot of stuff on here, but the one I'm looking at is the, um, the relay for the cooling fan. So you can see that it says that the current temperature is 14.4, and the cooling fan is set to come on at 90, and off again at 87.5. I'm just gonna put that, I'm gonna change that to less than it is now, so the fan comes on just to check that's working. So I put that at 10 or something and the fan should come on. I probably need to click off the... That's okay. So that works put it back to 90 it's a lot better this way because you can especially if it's on a, a road bike because you if you in traffic a lot you you don't on the stock bike it comes about 105 so 90 is a better setting there's a lot of variables on this on this software it's, it's a great bit of kit really I'm not going to go into it all now um, but you, you can have a look you can download it free off the website and have a look at it and download a just a base map and, and play about with it the, if you were to do any tuning, um, the, the, the main place you'd be doing that is under base mapping here. And then you've got the, the timing, the spark advance and the injection quantity. So that would bring up a map, something like that. where you, you play about with the, the fuel map there and I'll we'll turn the throttle you'll see so you need that's why they need a good um, TPS needs to be, uh, to be working properly so you can select any box on this on this graph obviously uh, throttle opening down the left and then revs along along the top there 
but then they'll they'll come supplied with a, a decent map that will start the bike anyway. We've got we've got maps for all sorts of different K's, racing, road, eight valve, K seventy five, so but that well we'll see when we start this bike up what it runs like when we put it on the dyno and if we need to adjust it we will. We're ready to um, try and start the bike up. I'll have to um, put the fuel tank on obviously and some fuel pipes and reconnect the ignition and then we'll see if it starts. Dyno result after the engine management kit has been fitted. Ninety three point eight and sixty seven foot pounds. That's the old one. It was before it was sixty seven fifty two. So pretty good increase. And that's the air fuel ratio um, before before it was down there it was rich and now we brought it up into the sort of area you want it so there we go 
Right, we've done the dyno run and um, it's shown a good increase in power. Uh, we had to adjust the fueling, it was a bit rich still, uh, probably due to the injectors that are on it and also that it's got the high pressure regulator on this one. So we just need to bring the fuel amount down on the fuel amount. Other than that, it started up fine and it's running really well. Now we've used the dyno obviously during this video, but you don't need a dyno to fit the engine management system. It's recommended that once it is fitted, then you take it to a dyno and you can fine tune the map because each machine is going to be different depending on the exhaust system, intake and the engine itself. So it will need some fine tuning, but it, it will run as it is. This, this bike needed very little um, adjustment to the fuel map. Uh, it started off straight on the button. We had to balance the throttle bodies, uh, but you do that anyway because they came from a different bike. Um, other than that, it's all good to go. If you are uh, considering fitting the engine management system, doing a K build, uh, if you're starting from scratch, then I would recommend just using the engine management system and an engine not to use any of the uh, BMW wiring other than the um, starter relay because um, it's much simpler. Um, you can however retrofit them onto an existing bike, a stock bike or one like this that's had a motor gadget added. Um, but with the engine management system and the motor gadget the wiring is um, minimal. If you're thinking of getting the engine management system and um, doing a K build or retrofitting it onto your existing K, then um, hopefully this video will be helpful when you come to do that.